Welcome back. SGX Nifty is now down 13 points. Other Asian markets also down quite a bit. Uh, uh, Prakash, I wanted your thoughts on, uh, you know, since you do study some of these uh, uh, data points, uh, your thoughts on what's happening to the India VIX, the fact that we are so close to 21. Do you see it heading towards even 30 ahead of elections? And uh, what, what kind of uh, impact do you see on the market? Uh, what, what kind of range do you see for the market? I think uh, we, we probably are, uh, you know, just stepping into the final phase of uh, uh, this event-driven volatility uh, because you, you already have the RBI policy out of the way. You don't really have, a, you know, a whole slew of uh, global cues uh, ahead of us. It's, it's only the election, the mood that uh, the election uh, sets in and, and, of course, earning season uh, would kind of, you know, pepper it with some uh, hits and misses. So my sense is volatility is likely to uh, get aggravated and then probably towards the, uh, you know, closer to expiry of uh, the April series, you will probably see it peaking out as well. Uh, most of the decision making from smart money uh, perspective uh, in terms of buying into the market would have already been taken, Nanuj, uh, to be honest. Uh, and, and there could be some profit taking being taken off the table uh, for some of the stocks, uh, particularly in the Nifty, that have uh, really risen sharply. So even if the Nifty were to go up and cross the all-time highs and move towards that 12,000 magical 12,000 mark, uh, you would see very sharp profit booking also coming in. So I, I don't think it's going to be very sustained. Uh, the next big move could possibly happen in small, some of the you know um, largest mid caps, and and result season does tend to throw up those opportunities. So the next Nifty, uh, you know, the 51st to the 100th stock on the Nifty is is actually going to be more interesting as a pack to look at. Uh, I, I'm not looking at uh, any great moves on the Nifty beyond that, uh, you know, uh, as, you know, this whole attempt to cross that all-time high. Uh, led by some of the heavyweights, you could probably see a reliance start revving up. You could see some of the, uh, you know, largest pharma stocks also come back. And IT, of course, will contribute given the numbers. And one pocket that's likely to show very good numbers and could see a little bit of hope coming back is banks, of course. The larger banks could, uh, you know, the ICIC access, SBIs could probably throw in a lot of uh, positivity in the result season. And that's something which could also help uh, keep the Nifty afloat. But the interesting space will be the mid caps, uh, uh, where where you could probably make some trading profits uh, in the next 15 to 30 days. Uh, Prakash, hi, good morning. So in the mid caps, I wanted your thoughts on how one can approach Dish TV. Uh, you know, once again, talks are on that Singtel, Bharti, yeah. and Warburg Pincus could be buying the promoter stake there. Of course, then it has this whole SL group yeah. overhang as well. Uh, how do you approach it as a long-term investor? No, I think uh, there, there definitely seems to be the need to uh, look at uh, exiting for the promoters there, and, and it is a it is a decent business. Uh, the acquirers would also probably uh, benefit out of that, given the signage, especially if it's Intel, Airtel. You know, I, I don't know about a PE investor like Warburg Winkers, uh, how they would look at it. Uh, in terms of utilization but for a long-term investor there you know there's nothing much to worry about in terms of a bottoming out of the stock uh, whatever had to happen in terms of damage and i remember two quarters back when the numbers came out that was the time when it started taking this big significant hit uh, downwards and i said you know either you had to exit that point in time or you kind of now wait for some event to uh, bring back that value or unlock that value but I do believe there could be some value unlocking, uh, which would be an opportunity, not from a long-term perspective, Sonia, it's, it's more of a short-term uh, play that could be. But this would be the first company from the SL group, which would be on the block and where the transaction could be much easier as compared to Z itself, uh, 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 which, which is also on the block. So yes, some short-term profits could be made. Uh, but I don't see any downside from here, even if the deal doesn't go through as expected or in the time frame that's expected. Okay. Uh, hold on, uh, Prakash. Uh, we're just getting the first rates. And there's a dash of green at this point in time. Uh, that's contrary to what the HX Nifty was telling us, which was a dash of red. Uh, the dollar opened stronger. Uh, we closed yesterday at 69.11, which was a very strong finish for the rupee. We opened at 69.21 and quickly rushed to 69.16. Basically, dollar's marginally more uh, strong, but that's very marginal. It could be just adjusting to the higher crude price, uh, a price we have to pay. Uh, what's happening in the stock markets? Actually, Sun Pharma is down. So, uh, I mean, Ikta was there to explain uh, the US FDA's comments on their plant. And uh, the uh, metal companies are also lower, Vedanta, Z Entertainment, Anuj was pointing that out, that's down about one and a half. Metals actually, Tara Steel, uh, Vedanta, uh, Hindalco, all of them are a bit in the red and so are all the autos as well. 
You know, Maruti, I sure all of them are starting a little bit in the red. In the green is Bharti Airtel, India Bulls Housing, HUL Bajaj Finance, HDFC Bank. Now that the overhang is over, HDFC Bank can pull its weight with the bulls maybe. But I don't know if we should even be reading, maybe wait for the market to sell. TV is a stock that's up almost about 3 odd percent. Once again, talks of uh, that Singtel and Bharti Airtel buying promoters take that deal. So Dish TV is in the news. India Bulls Real Estate had a fab run yesterday and it's put on some more weight this morning. So that stock is up almost about 2 odd percent or so right now. Um, but uh, Prakash, uh, I wanted your thoughts on how to approach some of these pharmaceutical names. I know we've discussed them in the past, but anything that you like, there's a, a note on Aurobindo Pharma as well this morning. Sun Pharma has those 11 observations at the Dadra unit. Uh, do you stay away from this space entirely or do you buy any stocks? Oh no no that I, I think this uh, this could be probably as as we go closer to the all time highs on the nifty and volatility comes back uh, and it has started coming back pharma will probably be a pocket that people will look at uh, getting into sonia for sure uh, while oro of course has a very strong uh, future and a trajectory that's probably logical to that 1000 rupee mark that uh, was alluded to in this note uh, my pick at this point in time would be companies which have a very robust pipeline that's kind of you know uh, getting into monetization and one of that is Vokart. It's I know it's not a stock that I usually talk about because it's been high beta, it's, it's uh, disappointed a lot of times in the past, it's flattered to deceive but uh, this is one company that would very clearly be able to build itself, rebuild itself uh, on the basis of the kind of pipeline that it's sitting on. Uh, it's similar to Biocon in terms of, you know, the, the kind of juncture at which it is uh, from that pipeline perspective. But I would I would definitely stick my neck out and buy some of these names. Wokart is one. Uh, from the smaller names, Suwain Life Sciences is a company that I really like. The kind of work that they've been doing, putting in consistently, could probably fetch value very soon. So, pharma is a space that you would have to look at, uh, not necessarily go all out, but uh, selectively, yes. Okay. But actually, you alluded to that uh, city report on Aurobindo Pharma. Uh, let's invite Ekta to give us the highlights of that report. They seem positive on the stock. Well, yes, Lata. Uh, well, City has written on Aurobindo. They, it is their top sector pick with a target price of 1,000 rupees. According to them, it appears to be best place to navigate the fast-changing landscape for generics in developed markets, generic drugs in developed markets. They believe that the street has underestimated the upside from recent acquisitions. This is particularly, they've spoken about Sandoz, where, uh, remember that Sandoz had acquired, uh, that uh, Aurobindo had acquired Sandoz's generic assets in the US in September 2018 for $900 million. So the Sandoz deal closure, according to them, could be in Q1 FI20 and it could provide the next leg up in terms of completion of the deal, Aurobindo uh, would then be the number two generics firm by prescription. They see better utilization, strengthened uh, relationship with larger buying groups post the closure of this particular transaction. They see good upside potential at current levels. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Ekta, for that. Well, uh, getting back to the markets now, the pre-opening rates have settled absolutely flat. India Bulls housing finance is a big mover. It's up almost about one odd percent. And then you have a couple of these heavyweights like Reliance that are making their presence felt. Reliance is up almost about six tenths of a percent right now. Um, just wanted to, you know, some thoughts, Prakash Divan, from your end on the statements that came in from the, uh, from FADA yesterday with regards to how, you know, the demand decline in the auto space has plateaued and the worst is over for the auto sector. Um, would you take that on board or, or would you still be a bit cautious now? And with respect to stocks, what would you do? So, uh, Sonia, you know, one of the best parts about auto uh, is, is the monthly sales numbers, the kind of uh, uh, transparency that you have in terms of numbers and the product mix, stuff like that. Uh, I would I would wait to see FADA's uh, conviction translate into those numbers for at least a couple of months before buying into stocks. But yes, the kind of valuations which are uh, uh, you know prevalent right now for let's say a Hero Motorcorp or for that matter even uh, Aisha Motors, you know does make you feel that uh, you could probably have a better off uh, situation buying into some of these stocks as soon as that first indication of uh, things improving comes in. So Maruti of course continues to be I think in that uh, elevated uh, mood to you know outperform again so i would buy into some of these stocks on every dip but uh, uh, you know the conviction from fada's report could probably wait for a couple of uh, monthly ticks to 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 validate uh, before you buy into all of them uh, wholeheartedly but hero motor corp uh, from a valuation perspective and maruti from a comeback of sorts definitely make the grade yep <coughs> prakash an important uh, a finance company is going to get listed uh, and those are the shares of cox and kings 
forex business. Now, I want to come back to you on the traditional business of Cox and Kings as well. But the forex business is making its debut on Dalal Street today. Mangalam is here to give us the details of uh, the demerger and the valuations of this company, if possible. Well, Lata, there are very few financial details available about the Cox and Kings Forex business. So, the shares of the financial services business of this company list today. Remember, this has been long going. Uh, uh, as per the scheme of arrangement, investors will get one share of Cox and Kings financial services for every three shares that they held in the erstwhile Cox and Kings. This announcement was made in June 2017. The company went X the Forex business and X the financial services business on October 25th, 2018. So, while financial, recent financial details aren't available, we know what the company does. Uh, in the company, uh, you have the retail exchange of rupees for dollars or other currencies for all those people who travel and third-party people as well. They have inward and outward remittances, multi-currency foreign cards and also uh, uh, some forex for business travelers as well or corporate forex for business travelers. What has happened more importantly in the last 18 months ever since the demerger was announced was that the company has got an RBI and a license or NBFC license from the the RBI to finance travel finance as well as edu overseas education loans. Cox and Kings has a huge overseas education business and that parts of, uh, forms a, a fair part of their clientele. So this is something that would enable the company to do. So in uh, because of lack of financial details, here's a, 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 a perfunctory way, if you must, of finding out the valuation of the company. Before the company went ex demerger, the market cap of Cox and Kings was close to 3,500 crores. On October 25th, when the financial business was taken out, the market cap stood at 3200 crores. So that roughly values this business at around 30, 300 crore rupees in terms of market cap. However, if you divide that by the number of shares, it would be around uh, 39, 40 rupees per share. But that again is, uh, uh, is the basic back of envelope calculation in terms of the valuations.